Hey everyone, Kieran here from Glitch Free Gaming. Today we're going to take a quick look at Rogue Trooper Redux, which is out on the Nintendo Switch and also the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. I took a look at the Nintendo Switch version, I haven't seen the other versions, and in fact this is a remake of a PlayStation 2 game which I never played, so the main kind of the main kind of gist of it is that they're trying to bring out this remaster of the game that you know looks a lot better than the original game, but a lot of that is kind of just lost on me because I didn't play the PS2 original. So when I come into it and see, they're like, "Oh man, we overhauled all the graphics of this game, so it looks a lot better than the original one." I just see it as a game that doesn't look that good in general. <laughs> like it's they've upped the graphics of it to make it look a lot more closer to modern consoles like there's uh there's nicer textures and stuff like that there's some nice blur effects and things uh actually a lot of the cutscenes actually genuinely do look pretty nice but overall it looks kind of like a early to mid generation playstation 3 360 game like not a uh, so like when they were still doing cross generation games between like the playstation 2 and the playstation 3 and the xbox xbox 360 that kind of stuff it looks like that level of kind of detail of graphics, you know, the kind of HD textures and the higher polygon counts, but they haven't quite figured out how to put that into the, the overall world because they're still building upon PlayStation 2 foundations. Which they've done a good job at kind of building upon here, because obviously it's you know, been a while since then, we're on the PS4 and with the Xbox One and the Switch. Like we've come a long time since then and they've had a lot of time to kind of get used to making these newer things, but it's still, that's kind of what it looks closer to than a modern game. Like this, don't go into this game expecting like a full remake like that recent Ratchet and Clank game or uh, the even more recent uh, Crash Bandicoot uh, remaster or remake, which was, you know, beautiful. This is much closer to, you know, like when we saw Mercenaries 2 go cross generation across consoles or, you know, those kind of early things. Mercenary 2 is a really bad example. I don't know. That's just the one that comes to my mind because it, because it is. Um, but yeah, so Rogue Troopers, uh, third-person shooter where you play as a genetic infantry tro trooper by the name of Rogue. So you're a big blue man basically that has a big gun and shoots enemies. And that is kind of the gist of the story. There's a bit more like you get dropped with a squad of, you know, a squad of other blue men and they all get murdered, and then you pull the microchips out of the back of their head and put them in your stuff so like your gun gets one of your friends brains in it basically you're like walking around with a bunch of haunted accessories that are talking to you at all times and it also unlocks all other abilities so once you put an AI into your gun it gives you a bit more of an auto aim which is quite good and also it lets you use your gun as a sentry, which means you can just plop it down on a tripod and it'll just gun down enemies that come nearby, which is really fun. Uh, when you put an AI into, or an AI, when you put an ally's brain into your uh, helmet, it gives you the ability to create a hologram, which is handy because it draws all of the aggro of enemies, so enemies will just keep shooting at it, and you can then sneak around and kill them all off while they're, you know, paying attention to this hologram instead. Uh, or it's really useful for picking up snipers because snipers will still also aggro on that so you can just be walking around and shooting down snipers as they are shooting and giving away their location because they're shooting your hologram which is really fun. Uh, your backpack gets another dude in it and that gives you the ability to create more ammunition and also build upgrades and things like that which it's a really simple upgrade system it just gives you more uh, like more uh, like a bigger kind of clip count for your guns, and uh, unlocks a couple of extra guns and grenade types and that kind of stuff. But it's nothing like super mind blowing. It doesn't change the game in any meaningful way. It's just a kind of nice little system to have there. Uh, the currency you get for that you get just from killing enemies, so you're also never going to be you know low on it. So you're always just full of ammo and grenades and things like that. You never really run low on any of that stuff, which is good because it lets you play it more as an arcadey shooter, which is definitely the way I recommend playing it. One of the cool things about Rogue Trooper is that it does have that kind of uh, that thing that a lot of games promise but never actually manage to pull off, where you can approach levels in lots of different ways and 
the, the way you want to play it, you can do for the most part. So for example, if you want to play stealthily, most of the levels let you do that. You can put silencer on your gun, shoot down enemies, and you won't alert enemies, and so they won't be attacking you, and you can sneak through all the levels. Uh, there's also stealth kills that you can do if you get up close to enemies. Uh, you could play as a sniper, and you could just snipe tons of enemies, maybe, you know, put down a hologram to distract them and gun them all down. You could play as a cover base shooter, which is probably the weakest way to play it because the cover system is very bad, like it's just so unresponsive. Uh, you get in and out of cover by moving into it, kind of similar to the recent Tomb Raider games or The Last of Us, but it's just very unresponsive so a lot of times you'll just be running into what is very clearly something that should be a cover point and it doesn't work. Or even worse a lot of times. The opposite, you'll just be walking past a bit of cover and get stuck in it and then it's really unresponsive trying to get out of cover and you're just stuck there with an enemy shooting you while you're trying to get away. And it's a pain. Uh, another thing which is really silly little thing is there's some tutorial pop-ups that come up and you have to press A to dismiss them and pressing A to dismiss them for whatever reason also does whatever else A should be doing. So if you're in cover when uh, a pop-up comes up saying like, oh, you should use this grenade or something, then when you press A to dismiss it, you will also climb over the cover. So I died multiple times in this game just because I climbed over cover trying to dismiss a pop-up, which was silly. It doesn't happen that often though, so it's not the worst thing in the world, it's just one of those kind of funny little silly things that could have been a bit more polished. Uh, yeah, so... The campaign itself is pretty good, it's only, it's really short, it's only about maybe four hours long. Uh, you go through a kind of decent variety of level types, but it's also one of those things where it reminds you of how PS2 shooters used to be made. You know, all the lessons that we've learned about how to make shooters in the last couple of generations have obviously not be taken into account here because this is an old game. And so things like, there are two on rail sections in this game and both of them are very bad and that's because on rail sections and shooters are generally really bad that's why we stopped putting them into on rail shooters like uh, into on uh, modern shooters like most modern shooters just don't have on rail sections or if they do they're really short because it, no one wants to play no one picks up your third person shooter to be on rails but it's not Especially in something like Rogue Trooper, which does such a good job at letting you, you know, approach levels from multiple different ways. If you play through the whole game stealthily and then all of a sudden you're stuck inside, you know, a turret for an entire level, that just sucks. So, yeah. Um, I generally quite liked it. Like, the story's alright. It's not, again, it's nothing super special. It's not really, there's not much of it. Um, there's some okay writing in there which I assume some of it's probably pulled from the comic that it's based on, because it's based on a 2000 AD comic. Uh, and then on the Switch itself, like, it looks fine, but, you know, there are better looking third person shooters on the Switch, or at least there is a better looking third person shooter on the Switch, which is, you know, Splatoon 2. It's kind of one of those things where it feels unfair to compare any game to a Nintendo game, because Nintendo is Nintendo, so they're always going to push, you know, the limits of their own system. But, regardless, this doesn't look great even for a third party game. There are much better looking games out there on the Switch. But it does run well, like I never really had any frame rate issues. So it's worth it for that. Uh, it has a bunch of online stuff as well which there was no one really playing. I jumped into a couple of games and you know, never found a full game but managed to pair with at least one or two people. And. The two modes that are in there is there's just a point-to-point -point mode where you're just going from A to B and enemies are between A and B trying to stop you from getting there. And then the slightly better mode which is a horde mode that just, you know, waves upon waves of enemies keep getting dropped on you and you've got to try and survive as long as you can. Uh, I don't know if there's an actual ending to that one. I don't know if the survival modes have like an end point or if it just keeps going forever. I didn't play enough of them. We didn't finish it. So... Yeah, that's something that's there if you've got friends to play with. Uh, it does have matchmaking that doesn't require using Nintendo's really terrible online app, so that's a bonus. It means you won't have voice chat, but you can always use Discord or something anyway. Uh, it's 
it's easy to jump in and out of games with people. I'll give them that much. Like it's they, their online stuff, which you know I don't know if the original had online in it. If it did, then it kind of goes to show how bad Nintendo has dropped the ball with it on the Switch. That this PS2 game has better online menus and support than most Switch games. But it's it's fine. You're probably not going to play a lot of it online. It's really there for the campaign. The campaign's good, but it's short and it's a bit dated. So overall, I gave it a seven out of ten, which I think is you know it's worth playing but I'd probably say wait for a sale don't buy it at full price um, not that it's super expensive anyway like that's the thing like if you're if you've finished everything else on the switch or not everything else but if you've finished everything that you know it, all the big games on the switch this is kind of the next tier below that this is the return of that kind of B tier of video games and I kind of hope that they this does well and that they go and make a sequel to this because it's been a long time since Road Trooper came out. It came out in 2006 originally. So it's kind of weird to see them do this full like remaster of it. So it'd be nice to see if, you know, this is it. Like, they make enough money off of this that they're like, oh, finally, we can afford to finally make a sequel to this. There's some need, you know, there's some interest in this game. Uh, but yeah, it's standing on its own. It's an okay shooter on the Switch. It's good. It's not a must-have game but if you're looking for a shooter on the switch there's not a lot of them so it's kind of this and Splatoon 2 and Splatoon 2 is a much better game but if you've already played a bunch of it this one's fine like it's you know take a look at it so yeah 7 out of 10 for Rogue Trooper Redux on the Nintendo Switch thanks for watching uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and uh, we're hoping to get some more stuff out soon. Uh, also, please take a look at our website, glitchfreegaming.com. There should be a link in the show notes. And also, maybe give a listen to our podcast, Glitch Free Gaming, which comes out every week. And you can hear me and Mike and Paul talk about video games and what we've been playing. See you guys next time.